Hi, I'm Laurie Grunin from CNET, and this is the Nikon D3300. With somewhat better photo quality and slightly better performance, the D3300 delivers a modest improvement over its predecessor, the D3200. It's enough to bump up its rating and improve its status relative to some competitors, but not so much that it's definitively worth the extra money over the D3200 for buyers on tight budgets. The rest of the updates are minor. They include 1080-60p video, a redesigned beginner's guide mode, and a slightly smaller and lighter body. It keeps the old 11-point autofocus system of its predecessor and still lacks bracketing and built-in Wi-Fi. The new collapsible kit lens that ships with the D3300 seems kind of unnecessary to me. Unlike with mirrorless systems, where the bodies are so much smaller that a collapsible lens makes sense, the body of the D3300 is still relatively large, and the new lens only shaves about half an inch in length and circumference and 2.4 ounces from the weight. It's certainly not worth the extra $50 if you're buying it standalone. And since it will coexist in the market with the traditional 18 to 55 millimeter version, watch out when you're shopping and make sure you're getting the lens that you expect. But I also bet that there will be cheaper versions of the kit available with the old lens. The body itself is almost identical to the D3200, which had barely changed from the D3100 before that, except for a few tweaks. It's got a big, comfortable grip, and Nikon updated and streamlined its beginner-friendly guide mode. There's easy operation, which, like auto, provides access to a limited number of options, as well as an advanced mode, which describes the appropriate settings for the chosen scenario and then allows you to change the settings yourself. The small, dim viewfinder hasn't changed, which is unsurprising since it's typical for entry-level models. I really dislike the tiny focus points, which only illuminate, and briefly, when you half-press the shutter to pre-focus. They're kind of hard to see in moderate to dim light, so if you shoot on anything other than full auto, first you have to press the shutter to find the appropriate focus point, in my case center, before you can even begin to frame the scene. Overall, the D3300 tests faster than the D3200 and many of its competitors, but it still feels pretty slow to shoot with, possibly because of the relatively sluggish lens. The camera does deliver an excellent 5.1 frame per second burst with autofocus, and with no significant slowing as high as 30 shots. However, the autofocus can't really keep up with the frame rate, so there are a lot of misses. Photos are the camera's strong suit, and video looks pretty good as well. The 3300 improves on the image quality of the 3200, with most images appearing somewhat sharper, as you'd expect from the new anti-aliasing filter-free 24 megapixel sensor. And the camera fares pretty well compared to competitors, too. Depending upon scene content, the JPEGs are good up to about ISO 1600, and they're usable through ISO 6400. Colors look quite accurate, and there's a reasonable amount of recoverable highlight and shadow detail in RAW files for its price class. If you're looking for a competent but inexpensive general purpose first DSLR, the D3300 is a fine choice. I'm Laurie Grunin, and this is the Nikon D3300.